hey everyone great to have you back i hope you had fun with this video series so far in the last episode we talked about orc layers the basic blocks of any orc based jet engine to build upon that discussion we're going to talk about custom orc layers today we're going to learn how to create a layer to add or like any program representation to our jet engine since the last episode i finished the basic compiler wiring so for 17 episodes, um, our goal was to create a compiler with several uh, critical components attached to each other and wired together to work with the basic, minimal, uh, basic and um, minimal set of features. So I've done that now. Um, we have different components like the JIT engine itself, SLIR, diagnostics, uh, I don't know, like semantic analyzer, parser, and other pieces. All of them are now in place with basic functionality. They don't do much. For example, the error handling system just prints out the error. It doesn't do much, like there's no trace back or anything. And that's fine. Our aim was to just put them in place, wire them together to have an idea of how they're going to work together, to have the basic design. So I've done that and i decided to make some changes some extra changes as well just because in the future anyone uh, who wants to work on this compiler has to interact with llvm project as well especially the source tree i've decided to follow the same convention for the data for the source structure of the git repository so I had to extract uh, different programs that we have in the repository uh, into dedicated directories in the uh, root level. So I extracted libserene, serenc, serene rep, and other tools that we have and put them in the root directory exactly like how LLVM repository is structured today. Um, by doing that, I had to refactor the build system a little bit, add install targets to every component separately, um, just because when we want to install the certain compiler from source using CMake, it would be like much cleaner and nicer, like the uh, final installation would be much nicer and cleaner and also customizable. Anyone who wants to package this thing for a different Linux distribution, uh, they would have like an easy time uh, doing so. And finally, um, the way I work is usually I define some milestones for myself. And when I reach any milestone after the milestone, I spend some time refactoring what I've done, reviewing everything, documentation to make sure that like they match the source code. Uh, I clean up the code that I might not need. Sometimes I like I comment code in the repository just to uh, as a reference for myself um also i I, uh, I write some tests to pin down some of the functionalities and behaviors um that's what i'm doing right now uh, i'm going through all the to do's that i have in the source code make sure that either fix them or leave them for the future if they're like in a bigger scale um so it's going to take a while before i can uh, review everything and make sure that we're in good estate but uh, the good thing is after I'm done with the refactoring we're going to uh, work on different components and like focus on every uh, every component that we have to actually create the actual language now mm, for example we're going to improve the JIT engine uh, we're going to uh, improve SLIR to actually uh, reflect the different aspect of our language right now. We need the language specification to decide uh, what we're going to do with this language. We're going to decide on the type system. Uh, uh, we have a long journey, basically, ahead of us. OK, that's it for uh, the updates. Going back to the topic of the day, let's have an overview of what we discussed so far about ORC layers. We know that JIT engines, like any orc based JIT engine, uh, is made out of layers. It holds a hierarchy of layers, and those layers don't know about each other. So 
layer A might only has a pointer or a reference to uh, the layer downstream of it, right? It doesn't know what it does. Uh, like layer uh, layer A doesn't know what layer B does. It just knows how to pass the, the result of any computation that it might have to the layer B. Um, layers basically wrap different type of program representation in a materialization unit, which those units is to get stored in JITDI libs. Basically, any materialization unit uh, is responsible for describing different definitions that uh, it wraps, right? Uh, I'm going to show you in a bit uh, how it works. And then uh, pass those uh, definitions to the layer uh, whenever a materialization you need to hand back the program representation to the layer uh, it has a, like a materialization responsibility associated with it those responsibilities objects uh, track the definitions and how to materialize them and there's a like basically those responsibilities uh, has a way to let the JITDI lib knows when uh, a certain um, symbol gets material. Oh, it's really hard for me to pronounce materialized, right? And deal with the errors. We're going to have a look at how they work. Uh, we're going to create the um, create two material materialization unit today. So in order to create a uh, custom layer what we need is to first create a materialization unit to materialize whatever program uh, representation that we might have either asts or in our case namespaces or if your language has byte codes you might need like and you want to add byte code to your JIT engine then you need a materialization unit for your uh, byte code and then um we need a we need the layer class obviously the layer class is not uh, anything special you don't even have to inherit from another base class or anything like that but conventionally layers have three main um, function members add emit and get interface it's up to you up to you how to do, like design it but it's good to follow the, the or convention as well. So let's have a look at some code. Um, actually, let me do it this way. So if we go to libserene, um, lib, oh, actually include serene, jit, and layers. Sorry. Okay. So we have two layers here. One to add NS any namespace to our JIT engine and another one to add ASTs to our JIT engine. Let's just start with the namespace one first because it's much simpler. Both of them are fairly simple, but namespace uh, is even simpler. If you remember from uh, early episodes, we have a concept of namespace, which just contains a bunch of functions and symbols. That's it. A file directly maps to a namespace. So each namespace has to have its own dedicated file, or it can be in memory. It doesn't necessarily have to have a file, but you can't have a, like a namespace in two different files. So first of all, we need a function called compilers.ns which gets a namespace and spits out a thread safe module. If you remember from uh, our uh, earlier, earlier episodes uh, regarding to um, like ORC design and everything, ORC has its own uh, wrapper for the LLVM module, which called thread safe module. It just, uh, as the name suggests, a thread safe module. We can work with it in like a thread safe manner. So this compiler and uh, this compile ns function 
just has uh, like it we can pass a namespace to it and it's going to compile it to a llvm ir so here's the first of all let's start with the layer itself right so here's the layer as you can see we don't inherit from anything it's just the regular uh, c++ class we have a, a reference to certain context the base layer is whatever layer is downstream to us so what like the layer that is going to get our uh, result like the result of this layer is going to be uh, the input for the base layer we have a reference to the mangler and the data layout so in the constructor we simply just get the value for those references and uh, initialize the object as i mentioned earlier uh, conventionally it's like the main function of any layer is the add function so we can use that function to add different program representation to our engine um, in this case uh, our add function receives two parameters the first one is a re resource tracker and the second one is a uh, is the name of the namespace the resource tracker uh, we, we've talked about this in the first uh, JIT episode. It's just a way to track different resources that like we put in a uh, JIT dialy, right? So for example, if we want like right now, when we compile the namespace that we pass to add into LLVM IR and pass it to a compile like to any other layer, right? eventually it's going to end up in memory in some format right and let's say we want to reload the namespace we want to add the namespace again to our jet engine so when we made sure that there's no reference to the old namespace definitions so we can easily use this uh, resource tracker to remove the code from memory that's what a uh, resource tracker does um so what's going on here is uh, we seem like it's a oh forgot to mention that everything that i'm going to show you today is just an example i'm not using them in the actual jet engine of Serene just yet because um we like our aim was to create a simple compiler like bare minimum right we didn't we don't need any of that for the wiring that's why like I'm going to show you the actual implementation probably next episode or the next uh, episode after that and you'll see that um, our jet engine is kind of much simpler than this but in the future when we want to actually um, make improvement to our jet engine we, we're going to revisit this file make some changes make like Im uh, improve it in a way that is going to be suitable for us but now we're not using it, it's just an example. That's why we have some, we create some, uh, we create an unknown location, location range, and we pass it to the um, add function that receives uh, location as well. So it's a polymorph polymorphic function. Um, in this definition with three parameters, the location range is basically telling us that where we we're importing or where we're adding this namespace for example in in context of a uh, sudo programming language when we import another namespace this location would be pointing to that import expression or a statement depends on the language right um i'm going to show you the definition actually let me show it to you now so we just using a function from the context called read namespace. All it does it is to find the file associated with that namespace name in the file system, pass it to the, re like read it from the disk, pass it to the reader, get an AST, run the semantic analyzer, and everything. if everything was right, create a namespace object and return a result, uh, return the result to, um, to us so if there wasn't uh, if there was an error during this process we simply return the error otherwise 
uh, we're going to get the uh, get the namespace and here's the important one part so we're going to, we're going to use the resource tracker that we have here right we get from the input so that resource tracker is associated with the JIT daily by calling get JIT daily we're going to receive a, like a re, uh, reference to the JIT daily that uh, this resource tracker is made for right um so we can use the define function of any jitilib to define new symbols in that jitilib right uh, the define function is like a polymorphic function it has uh, many different definitions with different uh, input argument arguments one of them that you you can see right now um receives a unique pointer to a materialization unit so here is what uh, where actually materialization units come to picture here we um, like we have a materialization unit called ns materialization unit this unit here is responsible for materializing name spaces we pass a uh, we pass a reference to the current layer and the name and space that we just created alongside with the oh we, we pass these two to the constructor of that unit and then we pass that unit alongside with the resource tracker to the define function what happens is uh in this materialization unit we define some symbol to say yeah this program representation in our case the name space contains uh, this list of symbols and we add those symbols like to our materialization unit and then eventually we pass them to the define and define add those symbols to our JIT dialing. in this case whenever we need any of those symbols right any of those symbols just when we need them the JIT engine knows that okay where to find those symbols in that JIT dialing and by passing the uh, materialization unit it knows how to materialize them so since we wrap them uh, we're wrapping them right now in one unit when we look up any of those symbols the entire unit gets compiled to uh, and like all other symbols would be accessible after that point as well um, I'm going to show you how, uh, like, how did we define this thing? Um, so here's the unit itself. It uh, inherits from materialization unit, and basically, when we define a new materialization unit, we need to define two uh, member functions, that are like two important ones, actually three. Uh, get name is the other one, but it's so simple. Just return the name. Uh, that's it. The constructor is totally up to us however we want we can create it right now we receive a, like a reference to the ns layer itself and a reference to the name and space that we we're going to actually materialize in the future um the main function and the most important function here is materialize in this function like we need to materialize the thing that we actually wrapping obviously we're talking about the name space right now um this function gets a unique pointer to uh, materialization responsibility uh, as i mentioned the responsibilities track what symbols needs to be uh, materialized and the other important function is the discard function this discard function as you can see in the doc string whenever we like uh we don't need a symbol anymore or we want to override a symbol we need uh, like this discard function is going to get called and uh we need to handle it any like like we need to discard symbols in this function uh for example in case of a function if we want to override a function we have to uh get rid of the body of the previous one like uh, or the imp arguments list or whatever like clean up that function first discard it make sure that it's not accessible and replace it with a new one um 
but since it's a, it was the wiring um phase i didn't do much here and to be honest i have to uh, play around with this function as well and yeah that's the that's the materialization unit it's super super simple and the most important function is materialize if you look at the definition again super simple just calls the emit function of the layer itself and passes uh, like the responsibility and the ns like the name space to that emit function so if you go back and look at the emit function so we receive the responsibility from the unit like the materialization unit and a point a reference to the name space that we want to materialize all we need to do in this case is to call compile name space on the name space so as I mentioned earlier, the whole purpose of this compile NS is to compile a namespace to LLVM IR. So what, uh, what's going on, like right now we're passing an LLVM IR that is associated with our namespace. We compile it to LLVM IR and pass it alongside with a materialization responsibility to the layer downstream to us. So this thing in here, this thing in here is actually the result of our process, the result of our layer. We, we pass our uh, the result of our layer to alongside with that responsibility to the base layer, to whatever is downstream to us and accepts our output as an input. In this case, that would be like a compiler layer that compiles LLVM to uh, object code. Um, there's one uh, other member function which is really important. In order to show you how it works, first I need to show you how to use the like NS layer in the JIT engine itself. So if we have a look at engine.h, first of all, we have two member from uh, two members for ns layer and ast layer i'm going to show you ASC layer in a bit when we actually uh, in our um, constructor of our engine oh by the way this engine is not the actual engine as well it's just an example engine i wrote to play around with it uh, the actual engine i'm going to talk about it in future episodes but we, we, we saw something like this in the last episode when we actually uh, went through some of the examples from uh, LLVM itself. Um, so we have different layers, object layer and compile, uh, compiler layer, transformer layer, transform layer. Uh, we saw how to actually uh, create any of those in the previous episodes. So here we create two new two new um, layers. We actually initialize our layers that we added to our engine. The NS layer and AS layers, both of them have transform layer as the parent. So not parent, like downstream uh, layer. So right now we have like a tree-like uh, hierarchy. Um, we have NS layer and AST layer as serving to each other, and they both uh, have transform layer as the downstream, and transform layer has compile layer as its downstream, and finally compile layer, uh, compiler layer uh, result goes to the object layer. So when we actually uh, initialize this thing, the NS layer, we pass the uh, pass a reference to the serine context, base layer, mangler, and uh, data layer. We saw that earlier, right? Um, sorry. We saw that here. But let's look at how we actually, um, where is it? Mm -mm -mm. Um, sorry. Oh, I, I made a mistake. Sorry. So 
in the constructor of our materialization unit whenever we create the materialization unit in add function right here where is it i'm i'm the trailer oh here we call this uh, constructor here right if we look at the constructor we see that we get a reference to the layer and the namespace right and we need to uh, pass like we need to call the materialization unit constructor because we inherit from it and you know when we call that we first invoke the get interface function of the layer passing the namespace to it and then pass the result which is um, an interface to the materialization unit so what's going on in this function so what happens here uh, is that like we define what symbols this materialization unit contains right in in case of a namespace we easily can uh, traverse the and it's uh, the ASC tree and find all the definitions and create a symbol from it. So that's what uh, we're going to do. Uh, we're doing here at, at the moment. We have a table called like a map called symbols. It's just a, a normal map. We look into our environment. Like uh, if you remember from early episodes, environment like every namespace has an environment attached to it that keeps track of the global variable, global definitions and bindings so we traverse that environment and um, we get the name of any expression the root level expression and the expression itself then we look at the type whether it's a function or uh, if it's a function we set the flags to be callable alongside with being exported i'm going to talk about the flags in the future but for now exported and callable mean like uh, they define a fun they describe a function functions are callable and uh, exported from uh, other places as well um but because the definition we just want the symbol name the definition is going to be provided later and we use the mangler uh, to mangle the name and add that uh, symbol to our symbol map right that's how we do it here so we put the mangled name in our symbols map that we defined uh, at the beginning of the function and finally uh, we assign a, a list of flags to that mangled name when we oh and we return an interface containing those uh, symbols by doing this the JITDILI will know that what symbols are available to it from that materialization unit. So whenever we look up any of the symbols that we actually um, create here, we insert into our um, symbols map here, the JITDILI will know which materialization unit to use and it's going to uh, call the materialize function of that materialization unit to come to basically convert that program representation in our case name and space to LLVM IR and pass it to the transform layer for us. That's how it works. And to show you another example, um, we can have a look at the AST stuff as well, how to add ASTs directly to our JIT engine. It works the same. So we have a function called compile AST that instead of compiling a namespace, it receives a, like a namespace and an AST and compiles that AST in context of that namespace. This AST and namespace is really specific to Serene. If you're working on any other language that don't, doesn't have namespaces, you just can uh, compile any AST to um, LLVM IR code. And we have the materialization unit here. It works similar to the previous one, get name. And again, we don't care about the discard. It holds a reference to namespace, the AST layer, and the AST, AST itself. It will look at the materialize. We'll see that it again 
calls the emit function of the ASC layer, but it, this time it passes the responsibility alongside namespace and AST. And here's the AST layer itself, quite simple, holds the um, reference to the parent layer, downstream layer, sorry, a reference to the mangler. Again, same routine, it's quite similar to the previous layer. The add function creates the materialization unit with the uh, set of inputs that it accepts and call the define function of the jet dialib. The emit is again uh, similar, compiles that AST using the compile AST function into LLVM IR and pass that one with the materialization responsibility to the emit function of the downstream uh, layer. And get interface again is the same, but but the diff, like conceptually is the same, but the way it works is different. It just look in, into the AST to figure out what symbols it exports uh, and like what key binding it makes. Sorry, not key binding, name binding it makes, and uh, basically create a, creates a symbol for them, add them to the symbol map, and finally uh, return an interface. Um, so it's quite easy to understand, like the layer, the concept of layer is really brilliant because it's so abstract and so simple that makes uh, like a really complicated thing like a JIT engine so easy to understand. Um, to show you how compile NS works, in our case, our namespace exposes a function called compile to LLVM that we saw it earlier. That one just reads the AST, uh, walk the AST, calls uh, the generate function on different nodes to come up with the LLVM IR, um, and finally uh, add it to a LLVM, uh, LLVM module. The compile AST works the same with a few, with a, a small difference. The difference is like we get the tree of the namespace because we want to compile that AST in the context of the given namespace. So uh, we add, uh, we add the, we need to add the AST to the namespace. So that AST will end up being a part of that namespace. And we have, there's another function in the namespace, which is compile to LLVM from offset. It's like we add that AST to our namespace and Basically, AST itself, like the tree that the namespace has, it's just a vector of ASTs, right? So we, we say, uh, like we ask the compiler to compile the tree from the given ops offset, like from the exact location that we added the AST to. So it would be like compile only the mm -hmm. AST, but with respect to the rest of the context, it can look up symbols in the environment from previous ASTs. Um, like that's the only difference with compile NS. Um, so as you can see, creating uh, org layers or custom layers are quite simple. Um, we don't need them right now uh, in the like in the first milestone in the first phase. But I have a feeling that in the future we're going to we need to create our own uh, orc layers as well with the same purpose: add namespaces, add ASTs, or add bytecodes codes to the JIT engine, or add shared libraries, or whatever. Like there's like tons of stuff that you can do with the libraries, uh, with the um, layers. Um, there's ton of, like other layers. Uh, built like made from the uh, built in into org like the compiler layers the um what was it jitlink layers it's uh, it's a really good idea to have a look at them to uh, like to read the code they're great examples if you want to start creating your own custom layer um in the next episode uh or the one after that i'm going to show you the actual implementation of certain jet engine which is kind of really basic uh, I've decided to keep it basic and um, only uh, implement what we need and later on we can uh, enhance it or improve it in any way that we need. 
um i guess that's it for today uh and um i'm really excited about this video series i hope you're having fun with it uh, i'm looking forward for all your feedback and if you like what i'm doing please subscribe to the channel and leave a like it's going to help me uh quite a lot um thank you thanks for uh listening and see you in the next episode